Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you all for joining us this evening. I know some of you might have been tuning in for History of Spotsylvania. Uh, we had some last minute cancellations and so thankfully um, Curl staff is able to step in. I'm here with Kara Rockwell and Joy O'Toole, uh, both of which who are part of our adult services uh, team and they're going to do their presentation. I'll let them introduce that part. Hi, I'm Kara Rockwell. I'm head of adult services at the Salem Church branch. I'm Joy O'Toole. I'm adult services programmer at the Howell branch. And today we're going to do get started with genealogy and then we're going to focus on Spotsylvania County. All right. So switch over that. Okay. So first thing first, when we're talking about genealogy in our area, we've got to talk about the Virginiana room. It's open during regular library hours and is at our Fredericksburg branch on the lower level. It has books, vertical files, microfilms, etc. It primarily focuses on our service area, but it also includes some of the rest of Virginia as well. Uh, it, the room contains books, of course, on local history, local families, and topics of local interest, as well as for general research materials, such as passenger list indexes, histories of the state, and information on the Revolutionary and Civil Wars, to mention just a few topics. We have microfilm editions of local newspapers, census records, and so on. Other information that you can find are the Sanborn fire insurance maps, city directories, yearbooks, tax records, land records, cemetery reports. Next slide. And there's also a vertical file of articles and non-catalog clippings. That's what you see in the middle picture there. All of that is vertical files of clippings that are not cataloged. On the right, you can see an example of the Sanborn fire insurance maps. So we're going to start with curl resources, the resources that you can find at the library. These are resources that you can access free of charge. First of all, you would want to go to our website, which is www.librarypoint.org. Um, and that is where you're going to, everything is going to come from there. And so that's where you're going to start. Once you get to our website, you're going to go up here to the research tab. You can see a menu bar along here. The third one over is research. And the column furthest to the right is local history. This is the column of information where you get, you're going to find most of what you're looking for if you're trying to do genealogy and research in this area. So if you go to the first item, that's our local history home. So this has blog posts on historical topics written by local historians, historical societies, and other history experts. The next one in that uh, column is the, Genie, the Civil War page. The Civil War page has links to on-site articles and books that we have in our library on the Civil War, as well as links for Civil War historical sites, which are updated regularly by our librarians. So we do try to keep those um, up to date for, for your research. The next one is our genealogy page. Um, this is where we try to keep our direct links to things like our databases. Um, right now, JSTOR is the only database listed because this is an older slide. However, we just did add Ancestry Library. Um, and so that will be also be linked from this page shortly. Um, it also has instructional, instructional information and resources on the web, as well as information on the Virginiana Room. And again, like Kara said, that's a must if you're doing Spotsylvania County research, because that is going to be a treasure trove of information for your research. We have oral histories. Um, these are regional oral histories. Some are available online, while others will link to the catalog entry, and you can check those out from any of the branches. And then we have the virtual Virginian, 
virtual Virginiana room. This has links to online resources for Virginia research, it includes a link to the Fredericksburg research resources from the University of Mary Washington, digitized copies of local yearbooks, and some digitized old Virginia history books. The Virginiana Room, as Kara said, is located at the Fredericksburg branch. The items cannot be checked out from this room, but the room is open the same hours that the Fredericksburg branch is, which means that anytime the branch is open, you can access the information in the Virginiana Room. So as we said, there are many resources on Spotsylvania County in our system. Most are in the Virginiana room, but some that can be checked out. You can see what we own by searching for them in the catalog. Here are some of the titles of the research resources that we have. Um, personal property um, records, history of early Spotsylvania by James Mansfield, early Spotsylvania County, Virginia records order abstract, booked abstracts, and you can see there's just a ton of them. This is ne definitely not an exhaustive list. So you can search for them by title or you can also search the catalog by subject. And these are some of the, just some of the subjects related to Spotsylvania County genealogy and history. In addition, our public catalog is great for keyword searches. So if you think to yourself, I can't remember, you know, court records dash Virginia dash Spotsylvania, you could do a search for court records Spotsylvania and it will um, pull that up. And this is what your search results will look like. This is a search for Spotsylvania genealogy. But on the left hand side, you could see that there are options for limiting down like is it a is it a microform? Is it an electronic book? So you can just narrow down exactly what you're looking for. And other things you can use um, at the library for your research. We have a computer lab um, or just our bank of computers and they all have access to printers. You can access the online databases. Um, if Ancestry becomes unavailable remotely again, you'll be able to come in and use Ancestry and print out what you need. In addition, the libraries also have photocopiers that also scan. So if you have like a bunch of old family photos, bring them in, scan them, and then you can scan it to your email and you'll have an electronic record. We offer training on demand once um, COVID numbers go down and staffing levels go up uh, where you can get training on computer usage databases, um, but you can also get training and a tour of the Virginiana room. Lib Answers is a way that you can ans ask us questions um, by either by email or chat. Um, there are meeting rooms for groups that um, want to meet, um, Genealogical Society, for example. And of course, in normal times, we off often offer workshops on genealogy. So next we're going to cover some online genealogy that are, is available to you. And we're going to start with Ancestry Library. Um, that is something that you can access at the at, at any of our branches. Um, until December 2021, you will also be able to access it from home with your library card. Um, because of COVID, they've opened it up. But I believe that ends at the end of December. <clears throat> to access Ancestry, you're going to go to our research tab and to the A to Z resources. Ancestry Library is second from the top of the A to Z resources. If you're at home, you will need to sign in to BiblioCommons with your library card. If you have any problems with that, you can ask us and we'll show you how to do that. Um, if you're at the branch, you should be able to go right in. Ancestry includes many, many, many things. It includes census records, vital records, military and immigration, land records, wills, family trees, and more. I'm going to use several people from Spotsylvania County's history to highlight some of the resources in Ancestry. So here we have census records. Uh, census records are wonderful for making family connections, for knowing where people lived, whether they moved. Um, sometimes you can find um, whole, whole families that lived within, you know, in neighboring um, neighborhoods, neighboring farms, 
Um, so it's a really great way to make those kind of connections as well as the family unit itself. Um, so you can see over here on the left, um, I found Joseph Walker. Now Joseph Walker, Walker Grant, um, Middle School was named after Mr. Walker. Um, he was born in Spotsylvania County. And in the 1880 census, he's living in Spotsylvania County. And here he is with his family and his mother-in-law. Um, over on the right, you'll see Ann T. Bolwer. She lived in Spotsylvania County in the mid 1800s. Uh, her husband had a big farm there. Um, and you can see them here. Um, he is listed as a farmer with a very large property. Um, here he is, here she is as his wife, their three children and her mother-in-law. And they're living here in this record in Spotsylvania County. So if you look at the top, you'll see where which county it is. And you can actually, when you're doing the census search, you can search just for records in Spotsylvania County. Next, vital records. So vital records are really, really useful for, again, finding uh, connections. Um, you're not only looking for marriage dates, birth dates, and death dates. You're looking sometimes for, uh, for parents' names in the birth and death records. And um, sometimes also, as you can see here in this marriage record, you've got a father and mother, but then you also can see a spouse here. So here I did a, a search on birth records in Spotsylvania County. Uh, there were over 8 million results, so you would have a lot, but then you can narrow it down after that. Or if you know your person's name, you can do what I did with a family member of my husband's, and I just searched for her by name in this database, and I found her birth record here. With the marriage record, um, you can see how old she is, her birth date, um, how old she is, where she was born, the marriage date, where they were married, the parent's name, and who she married. That's a lot of information that you can then track down as you do your, your search. And then here with death and burial records, um, I, got, I limited the death records to Spotsylvania County only and had 35,000 results. You can then limit them by record type and century um, and if then if you look up, but if you look up the person, even if they were born in Spotsylvania and lived in Spotsylvania, they may have died somewhere else. Particularly, they may have died in Fredericksburg if for some reason they went to a relative's house or they went to the hospital or something like that. So sometimes it pays to broaden your search just a little. You can limit it to just Spotsylvania or you can limit it to, say, Spotsylvania and in joining counties counties, and that's often a better way to catch catch those people that you might be missing. Okay, here we have graves and links to find a grave. So in Ancestry, you often will find death records, but you often will also find a link to the find a grave site, um, which will take you then to find a grave, which is a wonderful free site for, um, for finding graves of people in cemeteries all over the place. So Man Page, who lived, who died in 1781 in Spotsylvania, Virginia, he was buried in the Page Family Cemetery. That's what it says right here. And there's actually also a uh, URL to a link, a direct link to the Find Find Grave website, which allows you then to look at the the web, the um, entire cemetery to see who else might be buried there. I'm sorry. Um, Oscar Minor Crutchfield, he was buried in the Green Branch Plantation Cemetery in Spotsylvania, Virginia. Um, what's nice about the find a grave then is you can see here are family members that you can hunt up. Now, the one thing that you're going to find with this kind of thing where you have links to family members here and in Ancestry, you need to take these as guidelines only because sometimes the information is not correct. A lot of times it is, but not always. Um, and so that is so, always something to keep in mind is these may be possible family members um, or they 
they may not be family members, somebody got it wrong. So always double check your sources. Ancestry has a bunch of other records too. Here we have military records for people in Spotsylvania County. Those would include things like World War I draft cards, which are a, a mine of information uh, for people in the early 20th century. Um, casualties, social soldiers records, pension records, and so forth. There are also city and area directories, school yearbooks like we see here, which is the 1958 Spotsylvania High School yearbook page from that. They also have court, land, and will records in Ancestry. And finally, in Ancestry, you can see family trees. So Matthew Fontaine Maury, who was born in Spotsylvania County, um, this is actually part of a family tree that is on Ancestry. Again, be careful, make sure that it's all correct, find the records that link it. Um, not all of these are 100% accurate, but it's a good place to jump off of. Um, and if you find that it's pretty accurate, if you look up here in the corner, that's the original family tree that this is part of. That will give you the bigger context for this family. Another thing that you often will see are suggested records in Ancestry. Again, those are guidelines only. Some of them will be your person. Some of them won't be your person. And you have to be very, very careful. Always make sure that you're matching birth and death dates. Um, use relationships and facts as guidelines. Um, so in this case, this is definitely him. His birth date is correct. Where he was born is correct. His death date is correct. Where he died is correct. We have these facts already. So we know that this is a pretty accurate record here. And if you don't have access to Ancestry, um, the next best thing is Family Search, which is um, the project by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. It is completely free. Registration is required to view records, but you can provide a minimal, a minimal amount of information. You don't have to include any family tree information. The one thing, good thing about if you do include your family tree, you will periodically get emails from um, Family Search saying, "Hey, we think we found another relative, or a new detail was added to the to this record." So, it's kind of handy to have that, but you don't have to. The site allows you to view records, genealogies, family trees, and more. But we're going to start with a search for records. And what I did is I went up to search, and then I chose records. And we're going to use Spotsylvania's own John J. Wright as an example. So when you go to search and you type in John J. in the first tab, in the first name field, and Wright in the surname field, we're going to limit to Spotsylvania County, Virginia. Do not check match all terms exactly because there may be transcription errors, other you know, misspellings, things like that. And then we hit search and we get our search results, which come back in order of relevancy. And you're going to see since there are by relevancy, you're going to get things like you'll get the census from a one year or you'll get death records or you'll get a birth record. It's going to be what they think you're looking for. So we click on the first result. And this is the top half of the record. And the next screen has the bottom half of the record. So you can see that the record also has like a transcription in there. It'll tell you what the what the original says. I actually like to go into the actual document myself just to make sure that, you know, they didn't the transcriber didn't misspell something. So when you see the little button that says view original document, we would click that and we would get this. Make sure the data on there matches what you know, especially if you have a common name. It's easy to go down the rabbit hole and say, oh, this is my person and it's not your person. Um, but also be open to any changes. You know, maybe you only had a vague idea of when the death date was and then this record will um, tell you for sure what the death date is. Um, Ideally, we want to verify facts with primary records, primary source records, or multiple sources. You know, don't just take anything at face value. You know, librarian and history major, verify, 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 verify. 
So then we are going to go back to the search results. And the second one on the screen looks like it's the wrong date. So we're going to skip that. And then the third result is from the 1930 census. And here's the top half of the record again. And the next slide has the bottom half of the record. So again, you can see the transcribed data and you can see all the other members of the family. But again, we're gonna go click, there's a little button up at the top. This is click, um, see original document. We're gonna click on that. And then you get the census record. I know you're saying it's very hard to see this slide. Yes, it is. Um, but there is a transcription at the bottom. So you can kind of see um, what it says, but there's also tools in there that will let you zoom in and out, um, will let you print, um, save, um, and make it generally easier to read. We do recommend that you get a copy of the blank census form, like get a blank 1930 census form so that you can see what's in each column. Otherwise, you'll be scrolling up and just saying, okay, I think that's birthplace, but not sure. So let me go for it. Yeah. So, um, you can get those freely available online archives, Cindy's list, you know, they're everywhere. Um, but that's what we recommend um, so that you are not straining your eyes by squinting. You can also search the family trees and you enter the search terms and then you get the search results. Now, there's limiters on the left that will let you narrow down to exactly what you're looking for. But looking at the results here, these do not look like the person we're looking for. So we're not going to go into any more detail. Sometimes you'll have great luck and you'll find, you know, somebody's done the, re done the research and you can just verify the information yourself. Um, but oftentimes you won't, you know, you'll be the only one who's researching or has put it online. So don't be discouraged. The family search catalog you can search. Um, some items are going to be available online, some are not. Um, if you cannot access it online, then we recommend you can go to a family history center. There is one in the Fredericksburg area that's currently closed due to COVID, but um, Library of Virginia in Richmond also is a family history center and you can drive down there, make a day of it, um, get all your research done and then have a leisurely lunch. And there are online books. So if you search the Family Search Digital, digital Library, you're going to search all sorts of digital books um, for um, the search, the words you're looking for. But note that there are copyright restrictions on many of the titles, and they're not going to be able to let you view them outside of Family History Center. It was very discouraging when I was looking. Oh, I want this book. Oh, I can't view this book. Um, so keep in mind when the family history Cent local family history center reopens, that'll be helpful. Or like I said, Richmond, it's only about an hour away. So it's not, not too long of a drive. And then finally with family search is the family search research wiki. It is a must visit. They have gathered, and this has been a work in progress for years and years and years. They're constantly making changes, but they have worked to gather sources on um, types of records, localities, time periods, you know, different types of different peoples, ethnicities, everywhere, everything you can think of. And it's very in depth. And this next one is, this is just, um, what the Spotsylvania County, Virginia genealogy wiki looks like. Now, the advantage, the great thing I like about this, especially if you're doing something related to Virginia, is they will tell you, okay, court records exist for this. Or the really helpful thing is they'll say, okay, we're missing records between the years of XYZ and XYZ because of courthouse looting or burned records or something like that. But this will save you so much time trying to find where the land records are if the land records don't exist. So I highly recommend this one for anything, not just Spotsylvania County. Next site we're going to talk about is Virginia Memory. And Virginia Memory is the home of many of the digital collections of the Library of Virginia. There are so many resources here. You can spend days looking at it, but we're just going to highlight a couple. 
So what we would be doing, and you can see that kind of red, red box up at the top shows you um, how we get there, but we're gonna go to digital collections and then check select collections by topic. So one of the topics is biographical and genealogical, which contains databases like the WPA Life Histories and Virginia Untold, the African-American Narrative, both of which represent, have Spotsylvania County representative, represented, pardon me. The next one is under city and county research. Again, there's tons, but the take a look at the Chancery Record Index, which is an index to um, particular court cases. Some are digitized online, some are transcribed, some are just indexed, but um, it's definitely worth a look. It's Spotsylvania is um, on that one as well. And then also lost records. If you find out from the Family Search Wiki that there are lost records um, for Spotsylvania or the counties, other counties in Virginia, this project, they are trying to find other resources to fill that gap. Like maybe the records were in another location or they can fill in the information from another type of record. But that's a project that they've been going. So this is definitely worth a look if, you, um, if that affects your research. And finally, on this site, is under newspapers, there's Virginia Chronicle. And if we click on Virginia Chronicle up at the top, we're going to go directly to the Virginia Chronicle website. Now, Virginia Chronicle is a historical archive of Virginia newspapers. And I'm, I think this can either partially, if not completely, be found on the Library of Congress site, Chronicling America, which we're going to talk about. But I made the discovery that this site will allow you to limit by particular counties and cities. And it's so much easier when you're trying to get the Fredericksburg area and you can't remember just how many iterations there were of the Freelance Star. So we're going to search a phrase by putting it in quotation marks. And they did John Wright. And you can see also you can also browse by titles, dates and places. And then you can see we get a lot of results, um, but on the left-hand side, there's all these little place names and you can see Fredericksburg is so, sort of highlighted red. So we're going to choose items that are, we are limiting to John Wright found in Fredericksburg, Virginia. There was no Spotsy by the way. And now we're down to 12 results. So the first time I tried John J. Wright and I didn't find any Fredericksburg entries, so they changed it to John Wright. And then I found 12. And also note that one of them says Mrs. John Wright. Depending on the time period, a lot of times you're going to find instead of being known in the paper as Cora Wright, she's Mrs. John Wright because women were often known as by their husband's name in the newspaper. And you get results. This is one of the results. On the left-hand side, you can see a bunch of gobbledygook. Well, that's because a machine is trying to um, index it and tell you what's in the article. Um, and that's precisely why they get it wrong. And that's precisely why there's a link to make corrections. Um, but the names you or search terms you're looking for are highlighted. So you just zoom in and you can look at it that way. So next we're going to talk about the Library of Congress digital collections. So like the Virginia Memory digital collections, uh, this is these are a similar idea, but these are going to cover the entire United States. Um, it, they consist of primary source and archival materials relating to American culture and history. Uh, these historical collections are the key contribution of the Library of Congress to the National Digital Library. Um, you can search for Spotsylvania, Virginia to find photographs, maps, legislation, and other information. One of the most valuable collections is Chronicling America, which is a digital collection of hundreds of newspapers from around the United States, including local papers from the 1800s and early 1900s. These newspapers, as Kara said, can also be found at the Virginia Memory site. So you cannot, you can only uh, select by state in Chronicling America, which makes it a little bit more uh, challenging to find things than the Virginia Memory site. However, 
I was successful. So I was looking for um, a couple of the same names that we talked about back when we were doing an ancestry. One of them was Joseph Walker. And I found several things about Joseph Walker. So this is the Chronicling America site here, and you can select by state and you can select here by year. That's as far as you can filter generally. Um, you can also go and see all of the digitized newspapers in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Um, but this is the way you would search is on this main page. So when I was looking, I actually found that in this article here on Chronicling America, I took Joseph Walker, put his name in, um, in quotation marks so that it would search for the two names together and turned up a bunch of articles about him. Um, but then I had to go, kind of go through them to make sure that they were from the Fredericksburg area. Um, so I was looking for all the iterations of the, of the newspaper. So the Daily Star and the Freelance and the Freelance Star. Um, there are different, different names for the newspaper over the years. So one of them I found was uh, Joseph Walker had made a successful bid for a post office job, um, which is here. Um, there had been several articles about the fact that he was bidding for it. This is one that he was awarded the contract. Um, in this one here, he actually is listed in a, a list of donors to start schools, um, at, to start a school. And this particular industrial high school ended up being the high school for which he was named. Um, so this article is like the very beginnings of that school, and it has his name listed as one of the donors. So these are from early 1900s. This is from 1861, May 19, 1861, Oscar M. Crutchfield, who was from Spotsylvania County and was, was part of the House of Delegates um, in Virginia in, before the Civil War. This is actually a notice of his death here. Um, this was in a Richmond paper. Uh, there was one in a Richmond paper, and then this is in another part of Virginia. Uh, but it does mention that he was from Spotsylvania and that he was very popular, um, very popular in his in his home uh, county. So these are all things that I just found on Chronicling America of local people. Newspapers are a great way of finding people. They find you find out information about your relatives, you find information about what's going on at the time. It can explain perhaps why your relatives may have moved. Um, you know, if something happened, there was a, well, I mean, a war, but even things like a house burning down, those kinds of things are often in the papers. And so find, looking in local papers like this can often turn up information that will help you in your research. And then Kara had mentioned this in passing when she was talking about Virginia memory. Um, but Virginia Untold, the African-American narrative, is a, a whole database that is being put together. It's part of the Virginia Memory Project. And what they're aiming to do is to provide greater accessibility to pre-1865 African-American history and genealogy found in the primary sources. So they have many, many primary sources in the Library of Virginia. And what they are doing is working to digitize and index these. So the, it's still a work in progress. Every time you check, there's more there. So if this, if you will find, if you have family that there might be these kind of records, I highly recommend that you keep going back over and over again because they're constantly putting new things up. Um, they are, they, there are digital copies of primary documents such as deeds, court records, inventories, letters, record books, and so forth. You can browse by record type or by location. So if you can browse by location, you can go and see everything in Spotsylvania County, and it will help you to begin to um, find information on your family. Um, this is actually a copy of a letter that has people named and have things that happened uh, to those people, which is very useful information when you're doing this kind of research. 
So what if you have gone to Ancestry, you've gone to Family Search, um, you've gone to the Library of Virginia, you've gone to the Library of Congress, and you're still not finding what you need? Well, there are people who can help you. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about where you can go next if you're getting stuck. So one place is the Fredericksburg Regional Genealogical Society. Uh, this is a local genealogical society. Uh, they usually meet on the second Wednesday of the month. However, due to COVID, their meetings have been suspended since uh, March of 2020. However, as of July 4th, they were preparing to start their meetings again, according to their Facebook page. So if you check their website or their Facebook page for updates, um, they, will, they will put up on those places when they plan to start again, start meeting again. Although it is a, a place that people will join in order to vote, in order to participate at a certain level, anyone can attend the meetings for free. So there's no fee. Anybody can attend the meetings and listen to the talks. Um, if you're interested in genealogy, whether it's local or not, this is a good place to go. Some of the people are looking for local things. A lot of the people here are not. And so, but a, a lot of them are real experts in genealogy and they will be able to help you with some of your brick walls. Um, web, the website has a small amount of local resource information and their blog and their Facebook page have helpful articles as well. Sometimes if you're doing a lot of research in a particular region or state, it's worthwhile to join the Genealogical Society if they have online records at reduced rates. Um, it depends on the Genealogical Society. I don't know that this particular one has a lot of things behind a paywall, but it's worth talking to them about to find out, you know, what would be an advantage to joining. Um, it may be just as much advantage to, to just attend. Also, uh, there's the Central Rappahannock Heritage Center, and that's a collection of items from the Rappahannock area. They've been uh, collecting materials for several years, uh, documents, photographs, um, court records of the area. You can, um, they're currently closed to the public due to COVID and I don't see any information about when they are expected to reopen, but you can search their holdings online. Here are some examples of what exactly what they have for Spotsylvania County. And you could probably contact them and find out if somebody could either make a copy of an item or if it's possible, if they know if there's any more details about when they might be reopening to the public. Um, but it's definitely um, some of their records or their um, some of the information they have will have a, dig a photograph, a digital image on online that you can kind of look at too. Historic court records from for, or this is court records uh, for uh, excuse me Fredericksburg, Virginia. Even though we're researching Spotsylvania County, um, it's always worthwhile to check surrounding courthouses because oftentimes people will be a part of, uh, they will have filed something in a different courthouse. Also, this is for general information and not for legal research. Um, and make sure to verify by attaining the original document. This is transcriptions. And it's always good if you're look, working right off of a transcription, it's just to make sure that you can verify it with the original document. So the University of Mary Washington has Fredericksburg Research Resources uh, here on this website. Um, it's hosted by U the University of Mary Washington. They have city ordinances and directories. They have indexes to deeds and wills from the 1720s to the 1920 to 1920. They have newspaper searching from 1787 to 1928. That is very useful because what it will do is it will turn up the person's name. You put their first and last name into the search and um, it comes up with a bunch of search records with the with a person's name, with the date that they showed up in the newspaper and with the name of the newspaper, which is very, very useful because a lot of times 
the name of because the name changes or changed so many times, um, it actually gives you which exact newspaper it is. Some of them you can get online. Some of them you can't. Uh, some of them you would have to actually go to the Library of Congress to see them. I know that one of the ones I was looking up, an older one from the mid 1800s, uh, they have that on microfilm up at the Library of Congress that you can go look. So if you had a particular family member who was in the newspaper a lot in the mid 1800s in that particular newspaper, you could actually go up to the Library of Congress and view those record, uh, view those and make copies of those newspaper articles about your relative. Um, they also at this site have the U.S. Census list for Fredericksburg, Spotsylvania, and Stafford. Uh, if you're looking specifically for somebody, um, and but you don't know exactly what their name is, or you think perhaps they spelled their name wrong, that happened to me with one of my relatives. They spelled the name completely wrong, and so they weren't showing up in any of the searches. Um, you can go and actually look at the census records page by page, street by street. And sometimes that is a way to track somebody down. It is tedious, but it can be very rewarding when you find your person. Um, so that is, it, this is a little bit more accessible rather than having the big ones on the big sites. These are the just for Fredericksburg, Spotsylvania and Stafford. They also have tax lists and loose paper resources such as photos, plat plans, inventories, and other things like that. And here's our contact information. We invite you to email us or call the branches and we're happy to answer any questions that you have now or even later. Okay, so if folks have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat and we'll take them now. Or like Kara said, you can always take them later. You can call any of our branches. We can always direct you to the right person or resource depending on what you're looking for. Okay, so the question I have for you all, so if someone's base starting off with their family history, they've never done a family tree before, what's one of the first things that they really need? It's a cliche, you're gonna hear everybody say this, but start with what you know. Um, start with what you know and work backwards. Um, you know, your parents, your grandparents, and um, fill in what you can. If you have any older relatives living, sadly, I think so many of us who've done this, suddenly um, we get interested and it's like, you know, by the time I got interested in it, both of my grand, all my grandparents had passed away. So start, start with the most recent and work backwards. And um, a good place to start once you have some basic information is to start with the U.S. Census records if you have an idea of where they lived um, because that is going to turn up the rest of the family and will give you ages and siblings. Um, and, and that is very useful because say, say you know who your parents are and, and you know the names of your aunts and uncles, but you don't know a whole lot about them. Um, sometimes the aunts and uncles can give you clues to information to the next generation that you can't get from your own parents. For instance, um, in one case, I was looking for a maiden name for a great, great grandmother that I couldn't find. But I found her sister and her sister had her, um, her maiden name in her death certificate, whereas my great -grand grandmother had not. So following siblings is very useful. And the census records are really the way, place you want to start because that's going to give you some of that basic information. Awesome. And the census records, um, they're kept private for, I think it's 72 years, mm -hmm. um, but you're more likely to be able to find the census records um, than you will um, like birth records, a lot of those are kept sealed um, to keep from uh, identity theft. But the census records, you will also find neighbors and a lot of times people live near their siblings or live near their parents. 
Right. If you turn, if you go to the original census records, like Kara was showing you, rather than just the transcription, and you turn pages back and forward in the record, you often will find relatives that are living, you know, a, a couple of houses away, a couple streets away. People tended to live closer to one another. And I think birth records are about 100 years Um and the 1950 census will be released next year. It'll be a 72 years next year. So we'll be able to see the 1950 census starting next year. Great. Well, thank you, you two, for doing this on a last minute <laughs> basis. We really appreciate it. Um, so folks interested in joining us, we will have Vinny Leitner with the uh, Patawomack tribe for September, um, provided everything goes well. So stay tuned. We'll announce more as we get closer. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Bye-bye.